Device transformation VLSI. So in this one, so first of all, let us uh, know what is an integrated circuit. Is fabrication of several number of components like transistors, capacitors, and resistors, and a single chip of silicon. Uh, the bottom one is the layout of this uh, uh, circuit on the chip. So going to the next one is the advantage of integration reduced size for circuits reduced cost improved performance that is the operating speed of the circuit reduced power than the discrete component circuit high reliability requires less the space and promotes miniaturization next what are the levels different levels of integration here small cell integration is lesser than 100 number of devices here and this is used for the uh, manufacture of the base and the device used is the bipolar junction transistor. Next one is the medium scale integration, which is from 100 to 1000 uh, number of transistors. And these are used for, this is used for counter manufacture of counters, decoders, and ship registers, where the devices are BJTs and both MOSFETs also can be used here. So next going to the large scale integration. In the large scale integration, the number of devices are 1,000 to 100,000, that is 1 million. That is the, uh, you can be using the MOSFET. So for the manufacture of RAM, ROM, CCD, long shift register, codec, microprocessor, etc., this uh, uh, LSA can be used. And here the devices used are only the MOSFETs. MOSFETs means more metal access semiconductor field transistors. Next is the VLSI, very large scale integration circuit. When uh, the number of devices are greater than 100,000, it is the, uh, high, this is used for, it is called as the VLSI technology, and high, this is used for high capacity memories and microprocessors. The devices series are only the MOSFETs. In the ULSI, ultra large scale integrated circuit design, uh, more than 1 million transistors can be used. So then it is called as the ULSI. And this is used for the manufacture of microprocessor and microcontroller, microcontrollers. And here the MOSFETs are the uh, devices used here. So at the early stages, we had been using the bipolar junction transistor. But the bipolar junction transistor suffers from certain disadvantages like high leakage current, high power dissipation due to uh, high power, it generates high heat also. That's why the number of devices that can be accommodated and the single chip are limited. That's why we are using these BJTs only for the, and, uh, the small scale integration, medium scale integration. Later on, we are using all the MOSFET because of its advantages. And uh, it's uh, actually, it's uh, uh, leakage. There is no question of a leakage current here. Data is in the output side. It is always uh, uh, a conductor only. Uh, it acts as a small resistor. Uh, that's why there is no much power, uh, power dissipation and uh, much heat is not generated. So that we can be accommodated, we can be accommodating any number of MOSFET devices on the way chips. Next is the advantage of miniaturization of the uh, scaling down, greater density, short signal paths, high frequencies and clock rates can be achieved, lower power consumption also can be achieved. These are the advantages of uh, going to the miniaturization of the devices. So next, uh, here we have to uh, know one law, which is called the Moray's law. So Moray is the co-founder of the Intel Corporation. In 1965, he made a prediction. The size of the transistor will continue to shrink down, uh, resulting in double uh, transistor density and a double performance over 18 to 14 months, 18 to 24 months. So actually, his predictions were very useful uh, for the industries. Uh, for uh, just manage, uh, for uh, uh, planning their research and development activities. So in that way, it has caused it. And after that one, uh, after that, uh, an association has been established, International Technology Roadmap for Semiconductors, ITRS. This is, ITRS is a set of documents prepared by a group of semiconductor manufacturers around the world. These documents fix the risk targets for the next 15 years in the areas like system drivers are designed, system test equipment, front-end process, process integration, devices and structures, radio frequency, 
and analog and mixed signal technologies, electro micro electromechanical systems, photolithography, IC and the connects, factory integration, assimilation packaging, environment safety and health, yield enhancement, metrology, modeling and simulation, emerging uh, research devices, emerging research materials. In all these areas, the idea is uh, this, this association will be uh, fixing the targets for their research and development. According to this, every company will be planning their research and development in the corresponding, in the, for the corresponding equipment and they will be producing new equipment and new devices for the electronics service. And after this one, so what is the technology used for the manufacture of the IC? Actually, we have the silicon planar technology, which is used for the manufacture of the bipolar junction transistors, is also used for the real estate technology. So in this one, you can see here, here you see, for example, for the, for the fabrication of your NPN transistor, uh, here, first of all, we have taken uh, one uh, N type of material. Okay, this is called a, a substrate, highly doped N type of material. Or that one, a low doper N type of material has been taken, in which by oxidation and the uh, etching process, we have removed some of the material. So, because here all the uh, layers are formed, all the tunnels are formed from the upper side, from the, from one plane only, that's why it is called a silicon planar technology. This type of silicon planar technology is used in the early days of the manufacture of the bipolar junction transistor. The same technology has been used for the manufacture of the MOSFETs also. The MOSFET can be seen here. Here is the NBN N MOSFET, actually three type of substrate in which two islands are there, N diffusion and P diffusion. And actually between that one, uh, the substrate material acts as the channel. And over that one, we are having the silicon dioxide uh, in this gray color, silicon dioxide layer, thin silicon dioxide layer, which is the uh, which is actually the gate oxide and over that one you are having the polysilicon gate and actually all these uh, from all from all these terminals and this one is the source next this one is the gate and this one is the drain from all these three metal connections are brought out to uh, which is uh, which will be forming the mass structure and actually these ICs these transistors can be extended uh, laterally uh, uh, from the, to the in the x-axis direction and the y-axis direction to accommodate more and more number of devices on the same silicon chip. Interconnections can be made as per the circuit using these metal wires so that it can be forming a single circuit which leads to the formation of a two-dimensional IC. Here you can see this is a CMOS inverter circuit which is shown in the uh, cross section and the VLSI chip. And the CMOS inverter means here, this is the NMOS transistor, this is the PMOS transistor, and this is the P type of substrate connection, this is the N type of substrate connection. These are the metal connection, blue color of the metal connections. Here the source and drain are connected to get the uh, which is called output. And the input means actually here, uh, both gates are uh, joined. So here you see in from the top view, though you can see the gates uh, connected like this, this will be forming the gate of the uh, CMOS inverter and the input of input terminal of the CMOS inverter. And actually, here the uh, source and substrate are uh, joined, here also uh, drain and substrate are joined. So, in this way, from the top you can see here, so this type of things are repeated on the VLSA chip. Uh, wherever uh, we require, we will be connecting the output of one gate to the input of another gate like this and we will be forming the VLSI chip. And the, you know, VLSI and ULSI, there is no demarcation between VLSI and ULSI. Both are using the same technology, but VLSI is more than 1 lakh devices, it is called VLSI. And when, the, when it is more than 1 million devices, it is called VLSI. And actually, even uh, any uh, uh, VLSI chip also can be designated as a VLSI chip also. Next, uh, VLSI technology. How the VLSI technology differs? This is the minimum line width that can be produced on the chip layout. Here the minimum line width that can be produced on the chip layout is nothing but the gate length. So, the VLSI technology is described by the gate length. The 45 nanometers technology means the gate length of the devices used in the chip is 45 nanometers like that you are having. So the gate length is nothing but the distance between the source and the drain. This gate length is also described as the feature size. 
physical is a feature size. Okay. And in 2018, uh, the lowest technology node in the production is the 7 nanometers technology. And the one which is under the development is the 5 nanometers technology. There is also a test chip produced in 3 nanometers technology also. And if you are going to 2 nanometers, technology, 2 nanometers and lower, what happens is the material becomes one molecule thickness. Then we have to follow the principles of the nano nano um, materials and nano technology. <clears throat> okay, so now let us go to the short channel and the long channel devices. So actually, uh, uh, gate length if it is highly greater than the depletion region width of the uh, depletion region width, they are called as the long channel MOSFETs. And if the gate length is approximately approximately near the 2D, where D is the width of the depletion region, they are called the short channel devices. For example, if you are taking the transistor here, you see here the p-type substrate in this one you are having the n-type of diffusion so automatically a p-n junction is formed here similarly in the drain also uh, between the drain and the uh, channel a p-n junction is formed here the width of the p-n junction so formed is designated as the depletion region with d small d so actually here we are describing these devices as a long channel and short channel devices uh, so, if it is uh, gate length is highly greater than the depletion region width, then we describe them as long channel devices. And when the length is approximately nearly equals to 2D, then they are called as short channel devices. So, in the short channel devices, we will be having so many problems. <clears throat> okay, before going to that one, let us know the MOSFET regions of operation. So, uh, there are three regions of operation in the MOSFET one is the cutoff region. Next one is the linear or triode region. Next one is the saturation or pinch off region. Here, cutoff region means when the gate to source voltage is lesser than the threshold voltage of the transistor. Then it is called the cutoff region. Threshold voltage means the minimum gate to source voltage required for the for starting the conduction in the MOSFET. So automatically, when the VGC is lesser than the VT, automatically no current will be flowing through the transistor. That's why it is called the cutoff region. And in the triode region, the VDS will be lesser than the VGS minus VT. So when, when VDS is lesser than VGS minus VT, or and here VGS is greater than VT, then the device enters the linear triode region. In this region, the drain current is almost proportional to the drain voltage. That's why it resembles the characters of the triode. That's why it is called the linear region of the triode region. A linear relationship lies between the VDS and VGS minus VT. Next one is the saturation region. In the saturation region, the VDS uh, greater than or equal to VGS minus VT. In this region, what happens is pinch of factors. And here we have to study two conditions. When VDS is equal to exactly VGS minus VT and when VDS is greater than VGS minus VT. When VDS is greater than VGS minus VT, channel length modulation will be taking place. So if you, you can see the VDS versus IDS uh, characteristic here. So uh, here, uh, the bottom uh, and the x-axis, we are having the VDS and the y-axis, we are having the ID. And the bottom uh, characteristic is VGS lesser than or equal to VT. Then automatically, trans will not be conducting. Uh, practically, zero current will be flowing through the uh, your channel so automatically uh, the current will be on the x-axis next when vgs is vt plus 0 0.5 automatically uh, 0 0.5 uh, vds 0 0.5 vds we have to say here so here the curve will be like this that means the transistor uh, the, the voltage uh, applied on the gate is greater than the threshold voltage that's why it is slightly conducting now so when it is VGS is equal to VTS, uh, VT plus 1.0 volts, then it is conducting more. And when it when the gate voltage is decreasing, automatically the curves are going upward. However, that means what we can understand is when you are increasing the uh, VGS, automatically drain current will be going on increasing, provided VDS is constant. So here there is a dotted line here. So in the dotted line, uh, so this dotted line will be representing where VDS is equal to the VGS minus VT. Left to this characteristic, this gray color region is called the triode region. 
so in this one uh, in this region the characteristic is almost a linear line and after that one we are having the saturation region where where in uh, in this uh, uh, blue light uh, blue color uh, even though the vds is increasing uh, the ids is not increasing even though there is an increase there will be a very slight increase uh, in the current and actually because this is a constant current region the saturation region uh, so uh, because uh, because this is here uh, this ids is almost independent of the vds we call that one as the saturation region in this saturation region vds is greater than or equal to vds minus vt in the triode region vds is lesser than vds minus vt but vds is greater than vt we have to say and here uh, vds is lesser than or equal to vt that is below this x axis all cut off region only no color, no drain current will be flowing this is the uh, characteristic curves and after that one cut off region means here in this one ids is equal to zero so if you go to the linear region or the triode region here the conditions are vds is greater than vt channel is induced vds is less than vds minus vt so vds is kept small enough so that the channel is continuous and not pinched off so that is the point we have to see here and here uh, i am showing the n channel mosfet e mosfet n e, e stands for enhancement mosfet enhancement mos actually in the mosfets we are having two types of mosfets uh enhancement mosfet and depletion mosfet enhancement mosfet means uh, in this enhancement mosfet uh, there is no initial channel when the gate to source voltage is zero channel is not formed so when we apply the vgs automatically channel is uh, formed so automatically will be current will be flowing and after the depletion mosfet there is an initial channel formed and even though for vgs for zero uh, some channel current can flow provided some vgs is applied so here we are studying the enhancement mosfet which is the um, uh, which is the very important device which is mostly used in the cmos technology which is the latest technology in the e mosfets also we are having the n channel mosfet and the p channel mosfet here i am showing n channel mosfet here so in this one what happens is we are applying some voltage between the source and drain which is called as the vds and between the gate and the source we are applying the voltage which is called as the vgs okay so in this one Uh, if this is satisfying the condition vgs is less than uh, vgs uh, minus vt we have to say then automatically the channel is formed here and actually the channel is somewhat uh, tapered here okay on the drain side so that one uh, can be uh, well uh, uh, read here see when the vds is equal to zero drain to source voltage is zero okay so the gate to the uh, Uh, the gate voltage uh, what we have applied between the source and drain and moreover the source is connected to the circuit also so there is a uniform voltage distribution uh, between the gate and the source along the length of the channel that's why when the vds drain to source voltage is equal to zero here the channel is uniform channel is uniform throughout when the vds is decreased automatically the effective voltage between the gate and the uh substrate decreases as we go towards the drain and automatically the tapering will be increasing when vds equals to vgs minus vt automatically the channel will be just becoming zero which is described as the pinch off the channel will be just pinched off for example if the vds is greater than vgs minus vt automatically it will be coming here this line will be coming here and we will be having uh, the the channel will not be touching the drain region there will be some gap there will be some depletion region between the channel and the drain also okay which is called the channel length modulation and in the saturation region we are having a condition vds is greater than vgs minus or equal to vgs minus vt in this one we are having a condition uh, vgs is equal to vgs minus vt here i have to mention one thing uh, the ids formula for the ids here is the 1 by 2 k w by l vgs minus vt whole square into 1 plus um, sorry <clears throat> so we are having this formula and uh, when uh, during the saturation region when vds is equal to vgs minus vt so when uh, this is equal to when we actually hear what happens then the channel is just pinched off here so automatically the formula will be ids is equal to kwl into uh, vgs minus vt 
whole squared by 2 okay uh, and in the digital vlsi design we saturation means we'll be testing this one only uh, because the trans will be either in the saturation or it will be in the cut off in the digital ic design so when 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 it is in the saturation we'll be testing this formula for the design and after that one here when the vds is greater than vgs minus vt uh, what happens is the channel effective channel length will be reduced this is the physical channel length between the source and the drain between the source and drain in which the channel will be in this region only okay this is called as the effective length effective length is equal to physical length minus the depletion region width so that we have to see here so here uh, what happens is when uh, the when here the drain to source voltage changes automatically the effective channel length also will be changing that's why it is called as a channel length modulation in the channel length modulation region id is equal to half kw by l into vgs minus vt whole square into 1 plus lambda vds okay so this uh, lambda is the channel length modulation constant and actually <coughs> because of this uh, channel length uh, now uh, mod uh, and in the analog ic design this region is most important because we will be operating the mosfet in the analog ic design only in the uh, channel length modulation in the saturation region only that's why this region is very very important in the study of analog ics next one is the short channel device and actually so all the above for all the discussions so far we have made applies to the long channel devices which are the standard mosfets now we let us go to the short channel devices short channel devices means a basket device is considered to be short when the channel length is of the same order of magnitude as the depletion region widths for example xdd that means the depletion uh, width uh, between the channel and the drain the xds means the depletion width between the drain and the uh, source between the channel and the source so that is 2d you can say it is 2d okay as the channel length is reduced and increase uh, it, uh, it increases the operation speed and the number of components on the chip also so uh, automatically uh, the short channel effects will be arising that is when you are scaling down the devices uh, what happens is the short channel effects will be coming into the scene so what happens is the short channel what are the short channel effects we are having in a short channel device a limitation is imposed on the electronic drift characteristics in the channel modification of the threshold voltage takes place due to the shortening of the channel length due to which some short channel effects arise the five different short channel effects are drain induced barrier lowering dibl and punch through mobility degradation due to the surface scattering velocity saturation hot carrier effect which is also called as the impact ionization next one is the output impedance variations so all these are the short channel effects which are the adverse effects so we have to overcome them by somehow okay here uh, first of all let us know what is meant by punch through punch through means when the channel length is reduced the depletion region of the source and the depletion uh, source uh, source junction and the depletion region of the drain junction will be merging with each other they become a single uh, area then automatically punch through will be occurring that means the current instantaneously increases uh, so it cannot be acting as a transistor so this should be avoided so then we have to reduce the short channel length but at the same time we have to reduce this punch through effect that's why what we do is we increase the substrate concentrations near the junction area in the channel region then automatically what happens is the thickness of the junction will be reduced so that there will be there more gap will be provided for the channel so this is one of the methods used for uh, which is reducing the punch through automatically shallow junctions also will be uh, producing the uh, which is small it will be increasing the they will be leaving the channel like that and they will be reducing the thickness of the junctions so automatically somewhat the punch through can be uh, overcome in this method the next one is the rain induced uh, barrier layering <clears throat> so you see here the, uh, the threshold voltage variation what happens is threshold will be threshold voltage will be varying so what happens is when we see the uh, uh, drain 
and when we see the source here the because of the drain what happens is some uh, imaged by some uh, de, some uh, uh, what call fixed fixed charge carriers are induced here here also some fixed charge carriers are induced here by the voltage supply to the drain so actually the because of these fixed charges the area available for the uh, mobile mo mobile charge carriers will be decreasing when we apply the gate voltage here mobile charge carriers will be induced here so the area available for the mobile charge carriers will be decreasing so automatically what happens actually uh, the number of uh, mobile charge carriers will be decreasing so automatically what happens is the drain current will be increasing okay and also actually <coughs> uh if the gate bias voltage is not sufficient to invert the surface the carriers in the channel face a potential barrier that blocks the flow so here what happens is uh <coughs> so the when we are uh, gate voltage is gate voltage means actually if the gate voltage is uh, lesser than the vt not vt not means threshold voltage what happens actually the, car the uh, carriers will not be induced in the channel so automatically because actually what happens is because of this short channel effect what happens is this uh, uh, effect of the uh, drain voltage will be reducing the number of immobile charges which will be increasing the vt threshold voltage so when threshold voltage is increased automatically what happens is the current will be decreasing so the drain current will be decreasing that will be affecting the transconductance of the device okay so actually by adjusting the vgs value and the vds values the for this potential barrier formed in the channel can be addressed okay. <clears throat> and after that one <clears throat> the drain voltage is increased the potential barrier in the channel decreases leading to drain induced barrier lowering this leads to sub threshold current to flow sub threshold current means current the, that flows uh, in the uh, threshold region below the threshold voltage that is called as sub threshold current see here when the vds is smaller the current will be like this and that means when the vds is smaller what happens is and uh, this is the large vds so because of these two the threshold there is a threshold voltage variation you can be finding here when the threshold voltage is less automatically leads to the sub threshold current to flow so that is the disadvantage here and after this one mobility degradation so what is meant by mobility degradation mobility degradation means here we are having two types of electric fields one electric field is due to the vds in the v axis direction that is from the source to the drain and another is another electric field is to the gate voltage applied which is in the transfer direction what happens is when uh, when in the short channel devices what happens is The, because of the length of the because of the uh, length between the uh, because of the small length between the source and the drain or the small length of the channel the electric field intensity will be increasing when the electric field intensity increases what happens the electrons will be attaining higher velocity and they, they may break some coolant bonds within the channel region due to which some uh, like, uh, electron hole uh, bond pairs electron hole pairs will be formed so these electron hole uh, pairs and uh, actually they will be subjected to the attraction by the transfer electric field which is the gate electric field and they will be entering into the towards the gate also that they will be traveling then towards the surface when they travel to the surface also they can be attracted towards the drain by the drain voltage and automatically these a uh, charge carrier should be forming the surface charge carrier density but the surface charge carrier density is half as much as of the bulk mobility bulk mobility is the half surface carrier mobility is half of that one that one when this charge carrier goes to the surface because of the gate voltage automatically the mobility decreases that's why automatically the transconductance of the drain current will be decreasing automatically the transconductance of the device will be uh, which is decreasing so this is called the mobility degradation okay so that's uh, what is shown in this diagram this is the 
uh, direction of the gate voltage direction this is the gain voltage uh, direction and actually this is the electric field due to the gate voltage x and ey is the uh, what is called the electric voltage that is the electric uh, intensity due to the uh, drain voltage okay. <coughs> that is the disadvantage another one is the velocity saturation velocity saturation is and actually in the short channel in the uh, what happens is when you are increasing the drain to source voltage automatically the electric intensity within the channel also will be increasing so automatically when electricity when electric intensity increases electron drift velocity also will be increasing when the electron drift velocity increases or automatically the speed of electrons increases and the current also will be increasing linearly Th that is the formula that we have to follow but what happens is because of this short channels the electron uh, the electric intensity within the channel region will be very high due to the drain voltage and it reaches the uh, it reaches higher values such as uh, drift velocity of 7 10 to the power of 7 centimeters per second okay so when the electric intensity increases approximately e to the power of 5 uh, is equal to e to the power, is equal to 10 to the power of 5 volts per centimeter then automatically uh, the electron velocity uh, goes to a saturation when it, when it goes to a saturation automatically what happens is uh, the transconductance of the device will be in the, the, will be velocity saturation velocity will go into saturation and the current of that one will be current of drain will be coming to a, a constant value okay due to which there will not be any variations uh, because of the variations in the uh, drain voltage. So this is one disadvantage here we are having. So that is one hot carrier effects. Hot carrier effects means this is called the impact ionization. Okay, short channel devices may experience high lateral drain source electric field and some carriers that make it drain to have high velocity called the hot carriers. Hot carriers hit silicon atoms uh, which you have at high speed and cause impact ionization creating new electron voltage. So this will be causing the substrate current to increase okay so automatically sometimes some hot carriers under the influence of the gate voltage they will be entering into the uh, gate region uh, so the thin gate oxide and it is forming the gate current also these are the uh, these are the effects of the hot carriers so all these are the and here output impedance variation so the voltage applied to the gate one and the voltage applied to the gate two will be uh, will be cancelling each other in this channel region. So there is no uh, vertical electric field here. Okay. So only horizontal electric field will be there. Of course, the, no doubt the current will be controlled by the both the both get the voltages. So the, the, these carriers will not be going towards the uh, surface either uh, towards the gate one or towards the gate two. They will be traveling straight from source to the drain because of these two gates. That's what happens in almost all the hot channel effects are uh, to see and they have been evaded. This is the dual gate master. Similarly, we are having the fin fit. In the fin fit, what happens is uh, this is in the this is built with the SOI technology, silicon and silicon technology. That means uh, the uh, subject will be having uh, one SOI layer here on the bottom side. On the board, the SOI layer, we are having the uh, this is the source and this is the drain. And uh, uh, surrounding this one, we are having the uh, which is small the gate also. Okay, between the source and drain, you are having the gate. The gate is surrounding the channel on the three sides, and on the lower side, you are having the silicon dioxide. So there is no effect of the uh, short channel, and actually that means actually the uh, electric effects of the gate voltage are totally avoided, and that's why the thin fit also will be in the uh, highly advantageous device, uh, which can be avoiding uh, the short channel effect. This is the one which is mostly used nowadays for the manufacture of the integrated circuits and actually uh, the, these filters are used uh, the manufacture uh, nowadays with the 7 nanometers technology. All the chips from the Intel are 7 nanometers technology using the filter technology. Only. So that is the advantage. And actually these filters can be aligned in parallel like this. This is one filter to the gate and this one filter and a common drain and common source. Uh, which we can be having higher amounts of current using this one and the bottom we are having uh, we are having the insulator uh, this is that means this is the SOI technology so this is the main advantage of this 
in fetch and actually to overcome the deliberate delays of the you know, short channel delays or develop these fin fetch devices okay so uh, this uh, advantage in uh, advantage of fin fetch in patient mass a drop in is inserted into the channel reducing the ses and you know high threshold voltage in fin fetch the gate structure is wrapped around the channel and the body is thin also reducing the short channel effects and making channel doping optional therefore fin fetch suffers less from dopant induced variations and the low channel doping also in and the low channel doping also ensures better mobility of the charge carriers inside the channel this allows the use of lower threshold voltages and results in better performance and lower lower dissipation